Today is Saturday, November 12th, 2016. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the Listener Feedback Show for Survivor Millennials vs. Gen X, Episode 8. 8. We're already at 8. Wow. And it's the middle of November. Cranking away. The season's just chugging along, huh? Mm. Yes, it is. I didn't expect a whole lot of it. Matter of fact, I wasn't moved by it initially at all. But it's been a really nice surprise. I've been enjoying it. How about you? Yeah. Absolutely. I can't say that there's been a single episode that I was bored with or disappointed or whatever. Hadn't hit a lull for me yet. That's good. Yeah. I think it's it bodes well for the season. I have, I'm hoping for a strong finish. But right now, what I'm most interested in is what the other super vans thought about the merge episode. And if they've got any predictions for what may happen next and their thoughts on how... Several of the folks here are playing. There's big questions about Adam. And, of course, we want to hear people's reaction to Taylor. I think he's evoking some pretty strong reactions, right? And we've got this, if you're playing our Survivor Fantasy League, you got a big choice ahead of you this week. Who do you think is going to win it all? you got a chance to hit the reset button for that. So let's check in with how many? You know, I have not given it a thought yet. I don't believe you at all. I know that's not true because well, you've been I mean, talking about it. I have talked about it, but I mean, I haven't really sat and contemplated. Okay, if you say so. We've and, certainly and had I discussions about it. I've been really it. busy, and so. Do you recall that you had a discussion with yes, me? Yes. Do you recall what your night, last decision was? I didn't make a decision. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I think I'm sticking I with might, Hannah. I might stay with Hannah. Rhonda really got me thinking now. I, I, I wasn't going to stay with her, See, but yeah, she, yeah, she, now I'm she thinking. She didn't. It didn't happen. Hey, she's and making it some did. moves, and she's under, well, she maybe she knows me better than I know myself. <laughs> could be, could be. It's all Rhonda's fault. That, that's very well the case, I'm sure. Couldn't have anything to do with little Goan. Well, sometimes Goan just goes with what's easiest. <laughs> There's that too. And that I don't have to that's take time That's human nature. To think about. Hey, let's talk some more about human nature. Let's check in with some other folks All that right. have some observations there. We got 22, 23? 23. 23 super fans weighing in about episode eight and predictions for the future. Let's kick it off with Pete. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. This is Pete. Heat from Boston calling here. And I gotta say, with the merge now here, baby, I gotta let loose and say, Woo! Woo! Baby! That was a doozy, woozy merge, baby. And yet another epic blind side. Seems like every week this season, it's been an unpredictable vote. And I love it, baby. I don't even know where to start with this crazy episode. Well, I'll start with the easiest part. Will and Jess in that challenge. That was incredible, dear. Everyone seemed to get out within 20, 10 to 20 minutes. Yeah, Will and Jess duke it out like true warriors. And I give Will all the credit in the world. That's, that's a dream come true. I'm sure he'll cherish forever. And I love that they changed this challenge a bit, too, from one arm to two arms to make it tougher. That challenge... With the endurance is a true classic, going back to Survivor Africa, when it came down to uh, Clarence and Teresa, and it's been on just about every season since, it seemed. I love that challenge. Wow. Michelle, that was an epic blind side. So she'll be the queen of Ponderosa. But i got to be honest, I think David was the one that, that suggested getting rid of Michelle. Was it a good move? Maybe it was, because she was... She was playing under the radar and may have been a social threat, but I gotta be honest, I don't I don't agree with what the Gen Xers or even Zeke did. I would have gotten rid of either Taylor 
or definitely gotten rid of J because you could have got, gotten rid of a big immunity threat in J and clearly one of the better strategic players in the game as well as someone that has an idol and clearly J would have never saw it coming. I don't know, I'm worried that may come back to bite those guys. And then Adam, he dodged a huge bullet, guys. And I gotta say, I really love Adam. And I know he's been a super fan since the very beginning, like like all of us. But man, I don't know what was in his crazy brain there to go talk to Taylor and work with him. To add insult to injury, he tells him about his advantage. And you knew he was gonna tell Jay about it. And now the whole tribe is gonna know about it. And I'm worried he might be the one blindsided with the idol. But I give him credit, though, for, for working his way back in, and he ended up not needing his idol for this blindside of Michelle. I'm rooting for the Nerd Alliance, Zeke, Hannah, David, and I still like Ken, Jess, and Chris, a lot of guys to root for here, even Jay. I just don't want to see Taylor win. Other than him, I really don't care who wins, even if it's Will. But I'm looking forward to it, guys. What do you guys think here? I think that was a major mistake on Adam's part there. What do you think? Take care. Thanks, Pete. And I like that historical reference to that endurance challenge going all the way back to Africa. That was cool. Thanks for including that. I just want to know when we're going to get another male voted off. It's only been one. <laughs> yeah, he pointed that out earlier in the week after we finished the recap. I was like, there's yeah. only three females left. Mm. You know, I think the, there's some other folks talking left, about that, too. Except for Paul. Paul's the only man. That, mm-hmm. Otherwise, all the men are still there. Yeah. So what do you think, Pete's question about Adam? I just have no idea what drove Adam to do that. I I can't fathom why he thought that sharing that with Taylor was somehow a good idea. What? It's like he read a strategy but didn't realize that you have to think about who you work a strategy with, right? Like he he knows it, but he's never done it or something. I think he just kind of went off the uh, paranoid deep end. Maybe it's just by association. He's been with him the whole game, right? That's It's been a constant for him. And for some reason, he thought he could trust maybe Taylor. And yet, he has never been your friend. (laughs) Maybe maybe Taylor's done a much better job than we know uh, in terms of how he's managed Adam. Well, obviously than what we he can has see. if Adam would trust him enough. But bad move on Adam. I think part. we're all we were all hoping Adam would see through the the Taylor act a little better. Well, they say he's very charming. So. Mm. All right, thanks again, Pete. Next up, hey, we got an email from Skippy in Utah. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. First of all, thank you for the shout out and the listener feedback last week. I'm glad you liked the mock up of the T-shirt. I posted on the wall there on Facebook. When I heard you guys describing it, I could picture it in my mind and went to work making it, and that was awesome. We really <laughs> that enjoyed great. that. I want you to know that I've missed sending in my thoughts with all the other Survivor super fans, and aside from trying to follow the other big voting reality TV shows starring Trump, which just ended, here are my other reasons for not writing in sooner. I've been busy going to doctor's appointments. I've had five kidney stone surgeries. Oh, my goodness. Two two hand-grown toenails, one skin cancer removed. And on December 2nd, I get a cyst removed from my knee. Man, you had a streak of bad luck. I listen to too many podcasts, so by the time I'm done fully hearing what others think about this season, I forget to write down my own opinions. I'm lazy. That is so Gen X of me. Or is that my millennial side coming out? Which brings me to my first take. It took me a couple weeks to really get into this season because I was so frustrated at the name. Yeah, you and Rhonda. I think Barrett was um, grinding on Drew a little, too. It's not that I minded the idea, two different generations sparring, but it felt like Jeff Probst had no clue what the cutoff age for each group should be. Like everyone else, I think this has been one of the most enjoyable new cast we've seen in a while. There have been very few people who I would not enjoy seeing play again in the future. Even Taylor and Figgy have been a lot of fun, and I get why they were chosen to be on the show, even though... I haven't been cheering for them. Figgy was anti-Taylor in her interviews because she found out literally within 24 hours of when her exit episode aired that Taylor got a girl pregnant shortly before going out to film the show. So what we got in your interview with her was raw and reasonably laced with anger towards him. I think they'll make great TV when put on opposing teams and brought back. I I hope you do not get your wish there, Skippy. (laughs) 
If Michaela is not brought back on a future season as Survivor, I guarantee she'll show up on some other CBS show. Mark my words, we've not seen the last of her. There have been too many really good moments to talk about in this email, but it's safe to say that the casting department really deserves a hand. Yeah, they did a good job this season. Like the rest of the people who emailed you this week, I also enjoyed the surprise edition of the Steal a Reward Advantage. Adam was one of the better people who could have found it and appreciated it, and I'm sure we'll find out soon if, like Stephen Fishbach, he mishandles playing it. But again, because he's a Survivor super fan, he understood the significance of having it that very few others on the show would have. If Taylor had found it, he would have probably blown it on a hamburger. Though Adam certainly was not the best to find it, because who in their right mind would share that info with anyone else on the island, let alone the boyfriend of the girl you just sent home. I understand Adam wanted to prove to Taylor that he could trust him, but invent invent a different idol. Tell him that you found an idol that could bring back Figgy. <laughs> tell him anything but what it actually is. Again, best of all, don't tell anyone. Quick question for you guys. If you could bring back six people from this season to play another season, who are your six, and why are you bringing them back? Hmm. Okay, let's come back to that. Okay. I still love your back and forth. I even love how you edit the swear words out of your podcast so the younger listeners can listen without their parents having to be embarrassed. You guys are family friendly, which makes us a friendly family. All of us who listen, keep it crispy and may your torches never be snuffed. Skippy. Thank you, sir. Great to hear from you again. Okay, pick six. Um, Zeke Ken. Mm-hmm. Um, Surprised you didn't say Ken first. I'm looking down the road. You're eye candy um, just like all the other women have said Michaela I don't know maybe Chris Adam and um, I guess I'd have to give it to Brett because I don't care about bringing anybody up nobody pre-merge huh yeah I, I agree with a lot of that certainly I want to see Michaela uh, Michaela oh yeah she was right beforehand Hello. so uh, certainly Michaela uh, Ken yeah he's he's gonna shape up to be interesting Zeke uh, because I like watching Zeke play. I like getting to hear his insights. And he had some really, he had a cool extra episode this week. Not episode, uh, extra video where he was just, he was snacking on a sandwich Mm -hmm. from the merge feast, staring up into the sky, enjoying the stars. Because he he was talking about how you never get to see him that clearly in New York. Three more. I would bring Jay back. I thought about that, but then went. Because Jay's going to. Jay's probably going to end this with a, a villain kind of role. And he's played hard, uh, and it would be interesting to him see him and Michaela face off again. I like that that tension. Um, I don't know that I want to see Adam play again. I'm really frustrated watching Adam right now. Definitely Brett. We haven't got to see enough of Brett. I'd like to, like to uh, see him come back because I think he's got a good grasp on the game. He's just not a standout like some of these others. He doesn't have all these dysfunctions that people like David have. I know, but I, I don't know that I'd even mind seeing David. Mm, I'd have to just wait to till the see. end of the season to see. Yeah. I'd, see, well, I don't I don't want to watch somebody blow it. Pull it together. Right? I, I just don't want to watch someone fumble their way and waste a slot That's that way. That's an awful lot of people anyway to choose. Yeah. I would have probably stopped with three or four. But Okay, that's our answer. Yeah, I don't think I got to six, but that's close enough. Thanks for that, Skippy. Next up, we got a call from Shay. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Stacy. This is Shay. I literally just turned the show off. One thing I know for sure is that for some reason... It might be that I'm 45, but the millennials are getting on my last nerve. Uh, You know, Zeke and Hannah, I'm tolerating pretty okay. Everybody else, for one reason or another, is just driving me nuts. I, I don't know. I'm not surprised that Michelle went, and yet I am surprised. I know me personally, I was hoping it was Taylor all day long. He is completely selfish and drives me nuts. Adam is like a monkey on crack, bouncing around all nervous. That I can tolerate far more than blatant selfishness and a gameplay out of nothing but revenge. Taylor's just got to go in my mind. I can't believe he didn't go tonight. I was really proud of Will. Uh, He really did a good job in the challenge and I was excited for him to have that I'm really digging most of the Gen Xers right now. I don't know if I would be happy to see anybody leave. 
I don't know Sunday and Brett as much as I know the others due to edit, but I like all of them. I was glad it was a millennial that went. I really dug the challenge. was disappointed that there wasn't a reward challenge. But speaking of reward challenge, I cannot believe that Adam thought for a moment he could go to Taylor and divulge that information and expect it to stay a secret. I don't know what he was thinking. as He wasn't clearly thinking. It was just another great episode. This season does not disappoint at all. I thought it wouldn't be as interesting with Michaela gone, but it was. It was just a good episode. They they all have been. I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Thanks again for giving me a place to dump all this information and get it out of my head so I can go to bed without it in there. Okay, thanks and have a good night. Bye. Yeah, I think nice. Shay came in first this week. Yeah, she was early, huh? Good Needed job, to unload. Shay. Yep, thanks for that. Next up, we got an email from Nicola in Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Joanne and Stacy and all my Survivor family. I was traveling last week, so did not get to see Episode 7 until Monday. Now I'm all caught up. Arg. I was sorry to see Michaela go. She was great TV. Can someone give her a job as Jeff's sidekick? She certainly would bring some fun observations to the game. So on to this week. Just a couple of things really stuck out for me. Jessica. Wow, she was impressive. And I thought she almost had Will at the end there. I'm glad Zeke is my USB, but saying it out loud, no doubt, just put the kiss of death on him. Tay-Tay, please, someone, anyone, slap that stupid grin off his face and send him to Ponderosa. He has become so annoying. I'm looking forward to next week, though I have no clue who will be going home, but I'm putting Tay-Tay until he's gone. (laughs) Thanks for all you do. Cheers. All right. Thanks, Nicola. I'm with her. I, I may just put Taylor Tilly leaves. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that are trending in that direction. Taylor, leave. Taylor, yeah. leave. Next up, we got a call from Sophia. Hi, this is Sophia from Michigan. I just watched Survivor. I have some thoughts. Hopefully, I won't be speaking for two million years like last week. I think this week's episode really highlighted two people in my eyes. Jay and... Taylor. I think it's very clear Jay is the biggest target in this game right now. I think he has the best chance of winning. He's the player to look out for. He's the one you want to get rid of. And I feel like people know that, but maybe they're just scared he has the idol or they're just scared to get him out. But I think you really have to do that sooner than later because I don't know, those individual immunity challenges, he looks like he could do pretty well with them. Also, with immunity challenges, Will, I was very surprised he had the mental capacity or I guess just the mental strength to win the challenge. I think that is definitely a very mental challenge and you have to really push yourself on a variety of levels. So props to Will. That was awesome. Lastly, Taylor. I think he played horribly this week. He just, first of all, if you're going to deal a pretty large amount of the food from what the Gen Xers are saying, you know, maybe don't like clink all the bottles together and just throw everything around when you're doing it you know maybe just pick up one container slowly open it slowly grab a few items and you know maybe like go chomp on them somewhere else that's kind of hard to watch the way he's playing he wants to avenge Figgy but I think the best way to do that would be to win not to just crazily target Adam I just I don't think his response to Adam play is really what is going to avenge him best so (laughs) he's definitely going to be a great person to take to the final three but I there's no way he can win he's just he's such a fool wow that's all I have this week thank you guys so much for everything you do I'm excited to hear what other people have to say because honestly I don't I don't really have that many thoughts about this episode I thought it was not that exciting but just kind of highlighted a few people so Yeah, have a nice week, everyone. Thanks for sharing that, Sophia. Next up, we got an email from Jack in California. Well, everyone, we've made it to the merge, and I've got to say, there was quite a bit of scrambling right at the get-go after the feast. The new tribe name, Vinaka, if I looked it up correctly, means thank you. And now with both Millennials and Gen X together, it really comes down to whose generation has a better shot at winning the game. Zeke put together a great opportunity to talk to Hannah and Adam about their respective tribes during their episode. 
to see who they gained and who who can be trusted moving forward. There's a pretty clear split at this point in the millennials as to who has the most people on their side, and it looks like Taylor, Jay, and Will are on the outs there. Speaking of Taylor, it was obvious, at least to Brett and a few others, that he wasn't sneaky at all when he was trying to save a stash of food all for his own, and Taylor didn't seem to care. I think we'll be seeing quite a lot of these balancing challenges now, and they seem to be incredibly hard. I have no idea how good I would do at those types of challenges, but Will and Jessica seem to have no problems with them at all. Good on Will being the youngest out there and beating everyone else at that challenge. At first, I thought Adam was and still could be a smart game player, and I was considering him to be my next USB, but now I'm not sure. The reason I thought he was smart was by the way he found the advantage of stealing a person's reward, which could be very interesting to see play out, but the reason why I'm right now hesitant to choose him was because I thought it was quite risky not playing the idol at Tribal. It turned out he didn't need to, but I most likely would have. As for the next episode, Taylor's going around and being a snake behind people's backs, and I think that could work for him, especially telling Jay about Adam's advantage, but I hope it doesn't, and he goes quickly. I can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say. Loving this season. Thanks, Jack. Next up, we got a call from Rajmi. Hello, Joanne and Stacy, and all my survival friends. This is Rashmi from Perth. This season, we have been getting lots of blind sides. I haven't been able to get a single vote off point except for one, and that was Paul's, which was quite easy, I think. Saying that, it is always great fun when I, as an audience, am blindsided. All the three girls, Mari, Michaela, Michelle, gone. I think we have only three or four girls left, so it will be, I think by the end, we'll have more males than females this time. Now, Adam, I thought he was playing so well. He went and got himself the the reward advantage, which, and then he caught Taylor with the food and all that. It was going well till he went and said we should get rid of Will. I think that was a major flaw. And he really seems quite paranoid, Adam. I don't know whether he is going to last because he doesn't. he's trying to play both sides. At this stage, I feel that David, Ken and Jess are in a good position. And as I have to choose my new USB, I was thinking maybe Ken, but I still haven't made up my mind. Now about the advantage, I was thinking that the advantage, how could one play it because you would come across as really mean-spirited if you took away somebody's family visit or you took away somebody's food advantage and you're not going to endear yourself. But if you held on to the advantage till the auction and then you went and you bought everything and you got all your food and when everything was over, you played the advantage to get the advantage in the game. That's my only thought. I think the twist to the challenge this time with both the hands was really good and I was so cheering on Jess. I think she did so well. Sadly, she didn't win. Let's see. I hope she wins some other individual challenge challenge because I'm really warming up to her and that's it waiting to hear what everybody else has to say bye thanks Rajmi what do you think about Rajmi's idea I wonder mm, if you could count if let him, since the auction as a reward yeah exactly that's what I was thinking that's I'm not kind sure of that would gray be a area fuzzy huh not. be an interesting way to play it for sure absolutely good deal thanks Rajmi Next up, we got an email from Dan. I've really enjoyed your input on this season. Just a couple of quick points. Taylor is the guy everyone likes, but never accepts his gameplay. He will probably go far, but only to make their game look better. Jay will carry him. Zeke is dangerous, and the future swing vote. Mm, that's, a, that's a prediction. Mm-hmm. Sunday, Chris, Brett, and Hannah are non-factors at this point. Certainly David. Seems to be the case. David and Jessica will go far only because they seem to blend in better than most. But David needs to shut up. <laughs> thank you for thank you for what y'all do. Cheers. All right. Thank you. Wait Dan. a second. Which is it, Dan? Does he blend in or does he need to shut up? Because I'm not sure you can do both. All right. Good Maybe one. Maybe a little of both. Yeah. yeah. 
There you go. Next up, we got a call from Parker. Hey, it's Parker from Indiana. Uh, this was an interesting episode. It wasn't bad, but it, it wasn't as good as the pre-merge, which usually for me isn't the case. I usually like the post-merge better. Hopefully, hopefully it gets better. Adam is playing way too hard, and then when he said that he was going to use his advantage to take away someone's loved one reward, uh, that's, uh, that's not cool. That, ah, uh, no. That would, I would get him voted out pretty, pretty, uh, fast. Taylor is stealing food. Come on, man. It's just... <laughs> He's so immature, and he's not even the youngest millennial out there. It, it's just really sad. And then Taylor brings out the worst to Jay, because Jay reminds me of Scott from last season. How when he wasn't with Jason, I thought Scott was pretty good. But then when he was with Jason, he was just rude and bullying people. And with Jay, when he's with Taylor, he's just all like, bro, yeah, man. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and then we finally saw Will. Uh, he won immunity. Good good job, Will. Nice to see you there. And I don't think they made the right move at Tribal. I think they should have gotten up. Taylor. Maybe it's just because I don't like Taylor. Ah, uh, yeah. Zeke. He was amazing in this episode. I really like Zeke. I think I'm going to change my winner pick to Zeke because I thought he was really good in this episode. All right. <laughs> See you next time. Good deal. Thanks, Parker. Next up, we got an email from Meredith in Italy. Hi, Joanna Stacy. Fun season so far. I like that there aren't any truly unlikable people on the cast, although I confess to hate watching some of Figtail's antics, and I mostly just shake my head when Taylor's on screen now. Please ask him about his mason jar skills in his exit interview, <laughs> whenever that might be. At I the, made note. At the merge feast, did you notice the note on the crate gave a clue about the advantage? Yes, we did. Well, we didn't really notice it as we read something that explained what it was. We, we it didn't seemed, notice it. We read it through, and it seemed odd. We did not pick up on what she's about to tell us. Okay, Meredith continues. I'm too lazy to go back and get the exact wording, but the note itself was some somewhat awkwardly worded, and it said something about initials. If you read the initial letters of all the words in that note, it said something about the first person to look for an advantage first. I don't know if there was something more hidden in the crate telling him to look where Adam looked, but I thought it was interesting that the note at least hinted at an advantage. Yeah, you wrote that down, didn't you, when you wrote the... Did I? I forgot to bring it with me. If I did, I don't remember. But Meredith covered it. Basically, you just take the first letter of each word, and it says, hey, there's an advantage. It's up above. Make sure to look for it. Something to that extent. Yeah, without telling them exactly where it was. It just said... Look for an advantage. And we we looked at that and read it and stopped the screen and we're like, that's just really weird the way that's worded. But we there. didn't we didn't put it together in time. No, so. we didn't. Thanks for mentioning that, Meredith. Meredith, you saw con- it online, right? Con- continues. Yeah, there was somebody over on the uh, Survivor subreddit who uh, worked it all out. <laughs> Adam was so painful to watch this episode. I really want to cheer for him, but wow, he's making it difficult. I have no idea what he thought he would gain by telling Taylor about the reward advantage. Unless you use it to steal a final immunity challenge advantage reward, the reward stealing advantage might be best used to give someone else as a show of trust or as part of a deal. That way someone else gets set up to be the bad guy. It sounds great to have it, but to actually use it is another story. Adam's confession to Taylor is a setup for him, eventually giving Taylor the advantage. Taylor will play it, annoy whoever he stole from, and get voted out. But maybe I'm giving Adam too much credit for forward thinking. Can't wait to see how things play out. Thanks, Joanna Stacy, for making our Survivor viewing experience that much more enjoyable. And thank you, Meredith. It's great to hear from you again. Yeah. Let's check in with Marla and Sarah. Hi, Joanna and Stacy. Hi, Survivor friends. This is Marla. And this is Sarah. With our feedback. We thought we would talk a little bit about Taylor this week because I finally realized who Taylor reminds me of. Taylor reminds me of an old roommate I used to have who would always eat all the food and drink all the beer and say he was going to replace it, but then he never did. So that's kind of who Taylor's putting me in the mind of. What do you think about Taylor? Well, he says he's good with mason jars. Does that mean he's good at opening them? Because I'm good at opening them. Does that mean I'm good with mason jars? Yeah, I guess it does. Good job. (laughs) Thanks. Um, So we hope everyone is hanging in there this week. And we wanted to mention this to you, Stacey, that Sarah is finally old enough 
to be able to go to Math Olympiad, where she gets to go at 8 o'clock every Friday morning. We knew you'd be excited to hear that news. Thanks, Joanne and Stacy, for all you do. Thanks, Survivor friends, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. P.S. I wanted to add this. Last night, Sarah and I decided to watch Survivor in the kitchen, so we watched it on the iPad. And thank you so much, CBS Streaming, because the commercials that they were playing during the broadcast were for Viagra. That meant Sarah had to go running out of the room every time one of them came on saying, la, 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 la. So thanks, CBS. Bye, everyone. <laughs> oh, gosh. You oh, Stacy, yeah. Yeah. Mm. La, 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 la. Yeah, I, I hate watching stuff on their site. <laughs> I don't remember seeing those. And that's really unfortunate. Sorry that happened. But, uh, yeah, it would just be the same commercial over and over again, right? We'd end up watching it 20 times when we were watching the uh, extra videos over there. Gosh. Well, thanks for that visual. I mm-hmm. enjoyed it. Yes, and good luck with the math uh, Olympiad. I think you're going to do great, and you'll really get a kick out of that. Next up, we got an email from WT in D.C. Hello, Joanne and Stacy. Hello, Survivor fans. What a great episode. I'm sad to see Michelle go. I think she made the correct strategic decision to lay low for a turn or two before lacing back in, and it was a shame that she was such a convenient target for the opening opposing alliance. On the same token, I was very impressed with the level-headed decision by the majority alliance to target Michelle. They could have easily fallen apart around Adam's paranoia or Taylor's boorishness. Did anyone else see Chris having a physical reaction when they started talking Talking about medical emergencies, Adam's rhetorical challenge at Tribal were part of a larger plan to get Jay to play his idol on Taylor. Hmm. I can't tell because Jay seemed to be so blindsided by the vote. Whoever persuaded Jay that they were on his side and reassured Adam enough for him not to play his idol must have been very persuasive. I'm guessing Zeke. That guy is a charmer. At any rate, thank you for all the work that you do to put this podcast together. All right, and thank you, WT. Yeah, WT's making a great point there, whoever orchestrated that. And we did see Hannah cut him down, right? So... Maybe and warning him, he's going to get himself in trouble. Yeah, he's going to goof it all up. So I wonder if her talk, her little pep talk was enough or if they had to circle around with him again. Anyway, I, I wish they had shown that in the extra videos, but we didn't really get any insight there. Mm-hmm. Thanks again, WT. Next up, we got audio from Drew. Hey, everyone. This is Drew from Utah. I'm right up against that deadline, so I'm just going to send some quick feedback. I thought it was a great episode. I mean, I was into it. I was engaged and all this stuff so much going on but i can tell you i just cannot stand taylor like there's just something about his face that's so smug and so just kind of just so flippant about things that anyone else would be voted off for and i don't know maybe that's why they keep him around just because he laughs it off but it makes me crazy the food thing it made me crazy and the way he's talking to people and oh adam like what were you thinking i just trying to trying to win some points back after voting off Figgy, but you know what? There's no way to trust Taylor. It's just so frustrating. So now we have a merge, and it just looks like so many people there. I can't wait for some double eliminations, because this is just too much. You know, I think this is my first episode this whole season that I've lost a safe point. Actually, I think I picked Michelle safe. I didn't check. But anyway, that's pretty good, I guess. I made it to the, to the merge. So I think the Millennials are in big trouble, and that is just fine with me. These days, the millennials in the game and out of the game are just, you know, I'm kind of on the line, but I still don't identify as a millennial. Let's just put that out on the table right there. But I'm just getting annoyed with that. So let's see them taking down a peg or two. That's fine with me. I actually am looking forward to hopefully seeing some revenge from Hannah. I'm looking forward to Taylor's revenge blowing up in his face. That'd be great. I think he makes Judd, aka Fabio, look like a genius and i think he makes alicia i think it was her name look like the mental giant that she always claimed she was so um yeah it didn't go at all like i expected it would this week and your recap was good the interview was interesting i don't really have that much else to say but i will say the winner of the week is maybe zeke i don't know i'm looking at the list and i just can't really place anyone else but i think he's doing a good job of trying to keep it real between a few different things going on loser of the week i think is actually adam because he's just blowing his chances at getting an advantage left and right and it's just ridiculous anyway i really got to send this so thanks a lot it's always good to hear everyone's feedback and of course um, all the hard work you do so uh, talk to you guys later bye thanks drew yeah what's i think the most interesting thing once they're done cleaning house like drew was talking about getting rid of taylor and jay probably maybe will is how it's gonna play out from there 
mm-hmm. where these alliances are beyond that. Because I think they'll be able to hold it together at least through one more vote, maybe another. We're kind of thinking that maybe uh, Thanksgiving week they'll Could be a have a double. Yeah. It might be in the... The They've electronic guide. We, we should check that after we're done with the recap and see if it's there yet. Okay. Yeah, well, that's one way to know. That's the only thing I was thinking about. Thanks, Drew. Next up, we got a call from Kenny. Hey, guys. It's Kenny from Dallas. I appreciate your interviews, especially with Michaela and then Michelle, to get more insight. And they we flesh out those characters more fully. And I have to say the tribal council in which Jay orchestrated Michaela's removal was one of the most cold-blooded in his Returning her stare, I think, was classic Survivor. Unfortunately for Jay, I think he made that move way too early. It was a big move, but he's lost one of his key millennials. And as the last episode shows, there's not much left. And with him bragging about being a kingpin, he's not the kingpin of that much. And if I were him, I would be extremely worried. The other one who should be extremely worried is uh, our friend Adam, who is going way too fast and i'm afraid uh, has a good chance of playing himself out of the game he's been given a somewhat sympathetic story at it and i wish the best for him but he's going way too hard and to confide to taylor who has the same animus that say natalie had in the blood versus water season when they voted out her sister and then jeremy who silently vowed to get revenge it showed not much insight into sharing uh, crucial information with him Of course, Taylor is uh, the opposite side of the spectrum from Natalie in terms of intelligence, so I think there's not much of a chance he's going to go anyplace. And, you know, if I had, uh, my my USB is still in there, Zeke, but if I had to pick another one, if mine had already been voted out, I don't know who I would pick because, again, there's no clear front runner, which is, I think, unique for this season. I think that Chris is somewhat under the radar but seems to have his head on his shoulders and I think has the capacity to turn things around for himself or not even turn things around but to keep on going straight because the Gen Xers seem to have more momentum than the uh, Millennials do. All in all, a uh, fascinating season. Oh, and for Adam's bonus that he found, the I could steal your reward, he has to be very careful how he would present that or play that. And if he did make it as far as the loved ones visit, and he stole someone's loved one visit, I think all hell would break loose. Good season. Very good. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Kenny. Next up, we got an email from Titus in Boston. Hello, Joanne Stacy, and all your Survivor fans. My mind has been clouded by the recent two episodes. I don't mean to harp on this too much, but I wanted to hash this out. How much can we say about Jeff affecting the game of Survivor since he started narrating? Many times he has put thoughts into people's heads just by being more vocal about their positives and negatives. On the contrary, he misses or purposefully excuses opportunities in places where he usually comments. Those times are often game swayers. For example, when people make faces, Jeff is usually very quick to ask why. He asked Michaela almost every time from the edit we received what the face meant, but Jay made a face about Brett being so truthful to that tribe and Jeff never mentioned it. That could have started a conversation which swayed a pinnacle vote in this season. Yeah, that's true. That's a pretty good... I, I agree. That that was an unfulfilled face that was made there. That whole tribal council, they kept dancing around Brett being a cop and didn't do anything with it. That's why I asked all those follow-up questions in the interview with Michaela, right? Mm-hmm. But enough of that. Back to the show. Let's look at the current majority alliance. We have three millennials. Each millennial has two Gen Xers previously paired up with them. We have Brett and Sunday and Hannah. Then we have the strongest bonds. We have Zeke, David, and Chris, and the weakest group of Ken, Jess, and Adam. If Hannah can keep Adam in check and stop him from getting all panicked, they have potential to control the Gen X group with their respective bonds. Speaking of Hannah, she is a roller coaster. One minute she is a genius, the next moment she's all sorts of confusion. She has regained my respect again with her quick talk to Adam. I even consider switching to Hannah for my USB. Hmm. She has her moments, but let's not get too hasty. It is still Hannah. Still not as excited about the season anymore, but I watch in hopes that something will change my mind. Ciao for now. Thanks, Titus. Sorry it's bumming you out a little bit. I 
I think there's more excitement to come. So let's see how this plays out next week. Next up, we got a call from Jay Waffles. Hello, Joanne and Stacy and all the Survivor fans at home. This is Jay Waffles from Canada and missed getting my feedback in last week given some pesky real life commitments. But I wanted to get back on the horse with some few thoughts about this episode. And what an episode it was. Nice to see emerge as I'm not a fan of these three tribes in competition. Yes, it's cool to see how the different groups mix with each other, but there's just too many instances where airtime is monopolized by one tribe and we miss so much from the others. I can't be the only one who would like more than an hour per week. My first thought to the beach landing was we didn't get any reaction from the other castaways from Michaela's departure, followed by my second reaction from David's super awkward hugging spree. I can only imagine that every hug was provided with an added whisper of, I trust you, to every castaway. And Stacy, I'm glad that I wasn't the only one who picked up on Taylor's skills with a mason jar comment. As an aside, I'm pretty good with mason jars, maybe a contender for a great t-shirt design, but I digress. At first, I thought it was a ridiculous, if not fitting, comment for Taylor, but after considering it for a second, I think it could actually be quite brilliant. After all, what are mason jars for? You take stuff and store it away for later. What did Taylor do after running off in the night with his stomach medicine? He took all that info that Adam so stupidly shared with him, compartmentalized it in that empty jar of a brainy he has until he had some time to properly open it and share it with his alliance. Okay, regular people may just call that keeping a secret, but I think I might be onto something. Also, I had a rather disturbing realization this morning. What happened to all the women? With a focus about millennials versus Gen X, we gloss over the bigger issue that there are only three ladies left. And sorry to Sunday and Hannah, two are basically goats. Has this happened in previous seasons? I'm not trying to create parallels between TV and real life, but what do you guys think? How could this happen? And shout out to Crystal from Georgia. I was not sure who Daniel McGuire is, so I did a quick Google search, and I'm sorry to say that I am not him, but as this is an audio podcast and you clearly can't see me, I will say I look exactly like him. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, Time to eat some pizza. I mean, do some sit-ups. Bye. All right. Thanks, Jay Waffle. Next up, we got a call from Jacqueline. Hello, Joanne and Stacey. Hello, Survivor fans. This is Jacqueline, and I am from the scorching hot 90-degree Orange County, California. So here are my thoughts and opinions on last night's episode. My biggest gripe with these Survivor players is they always scheme, not always, but sometimes they scheme before the immunity challenge. And sometimes these players get wind of it, and it just adds fuel to their fire and sometimes they win and guess who has the power position now and guess who is enemy number one i've never understood why they do it and they do it all the time Ugh. another thing that i wish survivor players would stop doing is sharing their advantages i think it's so key to just keep it a secret because once those little birds start chirping you have that in your back pocket nobody can use it against you as for adam's advantage i think a cool way he can use it is hypothetically say someone like jay when it comes down to like six players wins immunity he's at the bottom of his alliance say he takes brett and sunday to reward and you know what happens sometimes on those rewards they start making deals at least try to and someone like adam can nib that in the bud take his original alliance no renegotiations how cool would that be right but instead he tells dum dum taylor and now he has a target on his back basically another thing i notice is when the gen xers and the millennial geek squad when they were talking the voting blocks did anybody else notice they never brought up Ken and Jessica. I thought that was weird. Like, what's going on there? And then at one point when they're talking about them, they never mention their name, but, you know, the camera pans over to them just sitting by themselves. Have they kind of, like, excluded themselves? I know that they voted with them, but I don't know. I thought that was kind of weird. Did anybody else notice that? Also, can we start a GoFundMe for Hannah? She, like, seriously needs new glasses. (laughs) As a girl who wears glasses, I constantly, like, look at her dirty uh, they look super scratched up like old i'm like oh poor girl that would annoy me so bad (laughs) as for tribal council oh michelle i don't think anybody's gonna miss her as sad as that sounds uh looking forward i always have no clue you guys are always have like 
great theories about what might happen next. I would love to see Jay climb to the top as an underdog because his alliance is just falling apart. Uh, I think that is about it. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Later. <laughs> Thanks, Jacqueline. What do you what do you think about that? Is there like a redemption arc for Jay? How could he make his way back like Jacqueline was envisioning? I'm I don't see it. I think the I think he's already he could buy his, his way back mm, with an idol? I don't think so. I think that would just put an even bigger target. He, he needs time to work. So if he if they take Taylor out, I just don't who is he gonna work with? Who's gonna reach out to him? I can't imagine. Who In one of the it. extra videos, Ken said that Michelle and Jay were walking around like they had it all on lock. Mm-hmm. Right? That's why I say I think he's already burned his bridges. He's alienated them? Unless he can win the challenges over and over and over and over. He's I, a I smart don't... guy. Yeah, he, he is. could see who's potentially on bottom. And he was he was so charismatic that, was it Zeke and Hannah were both talking about working with him? Yeah, but... You know, that whole, he already thought he was the kingpin, mm-hmm. and he was in control of this entire season, and, uh, you know, I think that just went to his head a little bit much, and I don't see any redemption for him myself. The only, so in this, in episode nine, in the next episode, if we see him manage himself calmly, if he doesn't go into burn it down mode, right? Watch it burn kind of thing. If he doesn't, because he's going to be, for the first time, he's really going to feel the fact that he has no control. If he can manage himself okay there and, and dodge a vote, maybe there's a way for him to come back. I, I don't. Hmm, I'm still not seeing well, it. Even though I, I, I think that he will certainly try to, you know, make Adam a target, and he, he might make even a few more votes. But I think eventually, I don't, I don't see anybody really. That's the path back. He might could make it back through Adam. Through what if he Adam. went to him and said, "Hey, Taylor's told me all this, and Taylor's like sharing whatever you're sharing with him." What if Jay could win Adam back? Adam's too paranoid right now. I'm, I won't be surprised okay. if they just vote Adam off and it gives them a little. So bit this is longer. a test for Jay. If he's yeah. not like a raging jerk, you know, in this next cycle because of the way it's going to go down, they're going to get back from tribal and he's realizing, ah, there's just me and Taylor and Will here. We're we're in a deep deep hole now, and <laughs> so much for me being the kingpin. If if he can not be a jerk or not get caught up in getting some revenge or that burn it down kind of mode that sometimes people take, maybe he could fight his way back as an underdog. I don't see anyone giving him cover right now, though. That's the bigger problem outside of Taylor. They get rid of Taylor, and then there's just Jay sticking there out like a sore thumb. Well, there are still six millennials and six Gen Xers. Mm-hmm. But I just um, don't know that they're going to pull together that way. Is that right? I don't think that's right. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. I guess I wasn't. I was math. Not counting just Taylor. Just basic math. <laughs> I was already thinking of Taylor's being gone. Thanks again, Jacqueline. Next up, we got an email from Carolyn in St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. What a merge week. I'm nothing but confused. If this season were the rough draft of a novel, it would be rejected by the editor. So many players are acting out of character. Mm. Adam has left me dumbfounded. <laughs> Bum he has, puzzled. Yeah, he has both an idol and an advantage to play with, but he's scrambling as if he has nothing. He's trying but failing to align with one of the cool kids, the one he just betrayed a few days ago. He's even aiding and abetting Taylor's food thievery. Jay has left me disappointed. He's devolving from a savvy, charismatic gamer to a self-involved loser. Jessica and Will have now surpassed others as the biggest challenge threats, since post-merge challenges tend to emphasize balance and endurance over strength. Some prominent players, including Ken and Chris, are just fading away. I guess they could regain their dominance, though, down the line. Hannah has surprised me in a positive way. She's now the voice of reason, even telling Adam to calm down. (laughs) I can't remember. (laughs) Yeah. I can't remember how long Hannah lasted in the uh, immunity challenge, but for now, that doesn't matter since no one sees her as a threat. Maybe I will choose Hannah as my new USB. Before this episode, Ken was going to be my choice. Or maybe Zeke. 
As I said at the start, I'm nothing but confused. Happy surviving. Well, Carolyn, if you want to be even more confused, <laughs> seek out the extra video with Ken and Hannah having a talk. That's yeah, really good. Yeah, they're really getting along. Yeah, it was an excellent extra video. So you'll you'll enjoy that, and then it'll just further scramble you on this whole thing, which will delight <laughs> or me. Or maybe it will give clarity. <laughs> oh, Never yeah, know. sure. Yeah, that's it. There's clarity there. Seek it out, Carolyn. Next up, we got an audio from Joe. Hello, Joanne and Stacy, and all Survivor fans. Joe from Huntersville, North Carolina. Wow, from first to worst, Taylor, Jay, and Will appear to be the next to go. But I have a feeling that soon as Jay is gone, Will will be a non-factor. Of the remaining contestants, there are webs of possible alliances. The Nerd Alliance, All Guy Alliance, Power Couple Alliance, which all leaves my USB atom on the outside or on the bottom. I think, if anything... Hana will make it to the final tribal as a goat. My guess right now for Survivor winner is Zeke. I think I will stay with Adam for a possible 24 points, but I don't currently see how that can happen. Those Survivor editors are always trying to make you think one way, then something unexpected happens. I like the extra video with Hana and Ken. An early favorite of mine, Jessica, is not getting as much airtime. Sunday. Is Sunday still in the game? Next off, I think it is Jay. If he wins individual immunity, then it's Taylor. That's all I have to say this week. Take care. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, there's a good extra video with Jessica, too. She's talking about what that meant for her to fight that hard in that challenge, even though she didn't win, and what she was hoping her kids would take away from it. It was good. You could tell she was pretty choked up. Next up, we got some audio from Jill. Hi, Joe and Stacey. Hi, Survivor fans. Jill from the Outback here. Merge episode, yay, and another chance to bash us over the head with the differences between Gen X and Millennials. Uh, good on Chris for bringing it down to just 13 people playing 13 games. And good on him also when Probst asked him about it being a millennial thing that Taylor took the food and, and he just brought it down to Taylor being selfish. Even though Adam survived the episode, I don't think he's done himself any favours. It's uh, he made Taylor look smart. The way that he went up to him when Taylor went off with the food and he followed him and told him that he wanted to get out Will, he, you know, this, that and all the rest of it. Why would you do that? And we see him next week. He's talking to them saying, you're on the bottom. Like, why does why does he think that's a good thing to do? Even the players that were on his side this week were a little bit frustrated with him. He's going to make himself an easy target with everybody. I do hope that he gets to play that reward advantage, though. That has got a real sting in the tail. It's going to be good that, mm. you know, that somebody can get a reward, maybe get much-needed food or a loved one visit or something, but it's really going to annoy somebody if they play that. I like the way Hannah played this episode. I thought she did really well. She was very clever in getting Adam to calm down and stop being so erratic when he was zipping all over the place and making everyone nervous. She really is like an Aubrey's and she's a bit awkward, but we're getting to see how clever she can be. And she was cute when she owned up to the pain during the um, challenge. So we're back to even numbers now, aren't we? There's six millennials and six Gen Xs. Millennials are a bit silly letting that number advantage get away from them. But one other thing I wanted to ask, what you guys thought at the start when we look at all their profiles and everything it seems a really important thing to quite a few people is god or religion and but we never ever see that in the gameplay i wonder why that is i just wondered what you guys thought about that hey you know what i thought was really clever was in the challenge where the the water fell on everyone and how the water was colored to each each person's bucket i thought that was really cool okay i think that's all i've got thanks very much to Anne stacy and look forward to hearing everyone's feedback happy days everyone wait thanks jill two great little lines there a real sting in the tail i like that and made uh taylor look smart <laughs> those are both good so we we were thinking at the beginning of the season that religion was going to be a big factor but you could hear in the michelle interview how she downplayed mm -hmm. it she didn't want to emphasize or push that and she planned to even keep it to herself from the very beginning. There's quite a few of them that talk a little bit of religion or mention their faith in some of the extra clips. Mm -hmm. Not so much in the show, but even Jay said something the other day 
and uh, you know about his faith in one of the videos. Mm-hmm. I don't remember or seeing that mentioned God or something. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but um, several people have mentioned their religion, but just briefly and in passing, more so They're not, than like. Like Jill was asking, they're not making it a part of the gameplay no. like it was in South Pacific. Right. You want to see religion end up playing a, a huge role, being manipulated to some degree by the alliance that uh, that was pushing that. Watch South Pacific, Cochran's first season. That, that was Coach versus Ozzy and... Uh, Definitely, we. I don't know that we've ever seen it pushed as much as that season. Think, it's come up in other seasons with individual players. Yeah, I think Will talked about you know maybe using that against people in the beginning, but we've not seen him do anything. Nor have we that. seen him play, um, uh, come through, deliver on his idea of fake idols, which I'm still waiting for. A couple people mentioned doing that, but still nothing so far. It's still early game yet. Could be, could be. Thanks again, Jill. We enjoyed that. Next up, we've got an email from Josh the Plush Moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, I had trouble digesting this episode. A lot happened and people said many things, but it's far from clear how the pieces of this puzzle will fit together going forward. I was struggling to find the theme for my feedback when it struck me that there were a lot of parallels to the recently concluded U.S. presidential election. Mm-hmm. Okay. The polls don't accurately predict results. In Survivor's case, the polls are the heavily edited episodes and carefully curated extra clips. A majority of the voters don't want to elect a woman. Seven of the eight vote-offs have been women. Of those, at least three we've seen as being too strong or th- were seen as being too strong or threatening. A candidate's words and actions don't always matter, even though they should. Getting caught with your hand in the cookie or mason jar should have consequences, but often it doesn't. There aren't two big factions vying with each other. There are a number of shifting alliances between smaller voting blocks. I tried keeping track of survivors' relationships using Paul's roster, but gave up because the string kept falling off my computer screen. Having an advantage doesn't mean you'll win. I think Adam is about to discover the truth of this when he uses his reward stealer. Votes are often cast solely on the basis of emotions or long-standing opinions. Adam can court Taylor all he wants, but he'll never get his backing or his vote for the million. Loose lips sink ships, also known as be careful what you say, who you say it to, (coughs) Adam. Uh, As Michelle can attest, sometimes other candidates in the party pay the price for the standard bearer's misdeeds. The bonus clip of Hannah bonding with Ken proves the truth of the saying that politics makes strange bedfellows. Sometimes the people you see peacefully admiring the stars are just taking a break from destroying others' dreams. That's that great clip from Zeke. Next time Jay, Will, and Taylor are on the bottom, will Adam's misplaced trust in Taylor be his downfall? Anyway, that's all I have for now. Thanks, Joanne and Stacy, for all you do. I can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say. Thank you, Josh. Oh, geez, what if Adam really goofs it up? What if he offers to save Jay and Taylor with his hidden immunity idol? Why would he do that? I don't, but he's on this... He's he's not thinking rationally. Why would he partner with Taylor? You can't ask that and expect there to be a rational answer. It, so It feels like he still wants to straddle the fence because he doesn't know where to commit. Yeah, they said he said as much. And just in case this falls apart, I need a plan B. And that's why he went back to Taylor again. Yeah, but to actively pursue plan B while plan A is still in effect is not necessarily that would just help. It's potentially furthering the disaster, the the train wreck we would have to watch if he yeah. spent his his hidden immunity idol on them and Jay get, got to keep his. Like what if he offers to protect Taylor with it? Mm. I don't see the advantage in that. I, I don't either. Okay, but well you that's what Josh Taylor will send you home. That's it. That's Josh made me think of it when he was saying that. I don't even know. Well, I guess it's safe to say Adam could actually make it worse. Let's hope we don't get to watch that. Thanks, Josh. Next up, we got a quick call. Just a shout out from Rodney. Hey, Joanne, Stacy, and podcast fans everywhere. This is Rodney from Illinois. I did not get to see this week's episode because I have been busy. I just called in because I wanted to say happy birthday to my daughter, Sophia. 
Happy first birthday, Sophia. Your daddy loves you. To everybody else, enjoy the week. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday, Sophia. I hope that stays around and someday she comes across this. Mm-hmm. That would be cool, huh? Let's wrap it up with Paul. Hey, Paul Louisiana here. And, well, it would appear that the cockiness of the millennials has finally come around to bite them in the butt. You can win all the challenges you want, but if you don't have unity or the numbers, you're going to fall apart. I've been hoping that a Gen Xer would win this season, and things are looking better and better for this actually happening. Of the Millennials, I only really care about Zeke and Adam to a small extent. But wow, Adam is either very naive or he's wet behind the ears or most likely a lot of both. Even worse, He's boring TV. If he doesn't steal a food reward that Taylor wins, then Adam is a lost cause for me. But that doesn't mean that I don't like him. I just don't care for him as a survivor player. That whole conversation with Taylor when he busted him with the food, what was that? I mean, the guy snuffed out Figgy's torch and created a mortal enemy by doing so, and then bragged about it to him for 20 minutes afterwards. Then, not even three days later, Adam tells Taylor that they should work together and, hey, guess what? I have an advantage. Now that's just dumb. And that reminds me, as I watched this episode, wow, there were long stretches where it felt as though I was watching Big Bother, which I haven't watched in years because it just got too childish for me. I hope it's just the fact that we have so many youngsters floating around this season because this is the kind of inane drama that I don't find enjoyable. And Taylor, oh my, he's just the popular version of Adam. Stealing the food and confessing to it without apologizing in the least is just too much for me. This is just stupid gameplay. But then again, he did pick Figgy. No offense, Stacy. You didn't know what she was like, while Taylor most certainly did. In the end, I think they're a perfect match, which is probably why it didn't work out. No one wants a constant reminder of their own shortcomings. It's why opposites attract. So then, who goes next? Well, I'm doing it again. I'm picking Taylor for a second time because, well, it's overdue. I don't think the advantage Adam has will cause people to turn on him because I really don't see it as an advantage and because the logical person to play it on would be Taylor. Especially after that information leaks remark that he made to Adam. I mean, when you tell one person something and word gets around, you know where the leak is. I also need a new USB because I have no faith whatsoever in David. And here's where I get hypocritical. With all my old fogey talk about those millennials and how irresponsible they are, I do like Zeke a lot. He's just so one of these things is not like the other. I'm considering him for my USB as well as Ken and maybe, just maybe, Jessica, but probably not. I did love her performance in the challenge, though. She won a lot of respect from me there, and I did originally consider her for my first USB pick before things started. I love Chris, but he's got a huge target on his back. Oh, and am I the only one who wishes we got to see Brett tell everyone that he was a funeral director? The only funeral he's directing is his own when he tells that story. So, Jason to go, and Ken or Zeke as my new USB. Probably Zeke. And I know I complained a lot here, but uh, this was a fun episode, and I am enjoying the season. This baby boomer is feeling just a bit crotchety this week. So, take care, everyone. Bye now. (laughs) Get off my lawn. (laughs) <laughs> Paul's going to ensure that David wins now. Yeah, if he switches away from him. If you switch him. away, he's going to uh-huh. win. Paul. There you go. You heard it. <laughs> yeah, I think Zeke and Ken are my front runners at this point, too. But Ken's been so quiet, and he seems... Uh, he's dis- been successful. Stressed in some ways. He's been successful playing from the back. He was there. I forget who was talking about was it was just talking about i was going to mention this that he wasn't saying anything that we didn't see ken and jessica sorry maybe it was maybe it was jacqueline but we did see ken there at one point when they were talking about who to vote out and ken was like taylor 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 <laughs> he's adamant that taylor no one needed was to go listening to him yeah but, <clears throat> but he, that was he didn't uh uh, uh he didn't change his vote at all yeah but and though he, he did vote and he should him, be an so. obvious one to be voted out at the merge because he represents a physical threat although these challenges can really trip you up like there was was it in the extra video with jay where he was talking about uh how his shoulder his left shoulder gave out on him almost immediately in that challenge Hmm. 
So he's got a he's got a trick shoulder. He's going to have trouble with certain things. Why didn't you, Chris, just go over and take the dang mason jar away from Taylor? Oh, he, he could, wasn't awake. He could do he like you know. do with me and just hold his. If he tried to hit at him, he just hold his his uh, hold him big out. hand yeah. to his forehead and don't let him get near him. <laughs> Within swinging distance, I don't know. Yes. Taylor's got, you long, got arms. long arms. You do that yes. to me. You can't reach me. You can't get to me. You can't poke me. You can't. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I'm getting back to Survivor here. Okay. In terms of USBs, because that's an important choice this week. Yeah. See, well, if I just stay with Hannah, I'll have to think about it. True. But if not, Hannah, who's your next pick? That's what I don't know. I could see this going so many different directions. You know, even Hannah and Zeke and maybe even Adam, but somebody, maybe Hannah, Zeke, and Ken even, or David, or some of those ending up with tighter alliances. Because at some point, I do think they will target uh, Chris and even yeah. Brett. Yeah, I'd like to pick Chris too, but it just doesn't seem. But they for keep some reason, he's home the weak women. Yeah, what is up with this season? Yeah, that's why it could go a different way. I mean, yeah, they sent Michaela home, and I agreed with she was a huge physical threat as well as a strategic threat. But a lot of the other women weren't that. Yeah, Mari maybe had some strategic chops. We we heard she. We saw something in the extra videos that maybe she was had something. She just didn't know enough about the game. But I, don't, I just don't know. Pause, Zeke. Pause, well, we went. We did this last time, though. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I shouldn't do that again. I just ask you if it's not Anna, pick yeah, one or two others. Who's your That's alternate? That's why I said Zeke could be. Ken could be. Even um, Jessica could slip in. Heck, people like Sunday. She could win. It's people true. like her. The millennials yeah. like her, and the Gen Xers like her. Everyone likes her. She's not uh, ruffling feathers. Mm -hmm. She's the the mother for everybody. She's pleasant. I could see them going, I would just give it to Sunday. We like her. She's sweet. It might be dangerous to think she was a goat because of that. Yeah, exactly. Because she's been playing, I think, an under-the-radar strong social game. Yeah, she's going to get called out for being a coattail rider for sure. But she would have that likability, and it all a lot of it comes down to social in the end. Mm-hmm. So she's navigating those waters pretty well. So I could see somebody like I'm that I'm going to have to rule in. Adam out with both Hannah and Zeke talking about how they need to get rid of him because he's not a good Alliance member because he's so unreliable. Well, I can't choose him yeah if, in good faith if for I had a usb not at seen this point the next on with adam still saying you three are on the outs blah, mm-hmm. blah 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 blah. it's like are you still trying to work with them that's going to put a huge target on your back because they they know where the he can other make three it worse. stand he can absolutely but, make it worse you know they could take you out just to get you out of the way so you keep running around Though, if they don't take Taylor out, I'm going to be upset. Yeah. If they or at the a minimum, food. like Paul was talking about, if there's, and there is, there's a big food reward this time, mm-hmm. right? So the, the right thing, the one thing that Adam could do that everyone would be okay with, right? Uh-huh. Is Let everybody go but, but Taylor, Taylor, well, and Jay, and Will maybe because they don't want them to get strong. Yeah, it may be those, those other two. For the, yeah. uh, but but what if he did it chance. so that it was everyone but Taylor? It's yeah, like, hey, you selfish little jerk! No food yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> everyone I else gets to eat. That would get everybody on his side. So yeah. and it would nullify it. It would be I a would funny like thing that. to do. Certainly be good. To see TV. that that could work, right? Maybe yeah, that could pull him back I'm around. Not sure. I know he's thinking more family visit, but you know, if everybody finds out about it and they do, you know, out his secret, mm-hmm. then uh, the other people could say that. Use it this way, Adam. We'll forgive you if you use it this <laughs> way. But it's better if he comes up with it's it. Better on his not own. to let Taylor eat because he's yeah. stolen all our food, and he just keeps replenishing his mason jar. It seems like that he's, from that the extra clip. clip. Yeah. He's putting more in he there. He's putting more in there. Yeah. I'm like, that's just all kinds of wrong. I think that's them manipulating us with the edit, though. Mm. Like, he's well, he's gone back because they were talking about there wasn't worked, a light left. It ticked me off. Yeah. Even more incensed about the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. I'm not it. sure how Ken doesn't grab him up the score. Adam takes the reward, shocks everyone, and then says, and everyone but Taylor can join me. That's it. <laughs> 
that that way it'll we work. We will feast. <laughs> yes. Mm. And go, there you go, Taylor. Yeah, I guess Zeke's my front runner. That's pretty much where I am at this point. Definitely enjoying that. I like that he was enjoying the stars in the midst of crushing dreams that was definitely a, a cool moment in the extra videos it wasn't significant enough i guess in the storyline to make the main episode but well, i like that but how amazing is it that there's three idols in play and not one of them's been played yet yeah i was just sure that thought was, at least we're gonna see it last week yeah you would think people would have been nervous enough but again like folks are saying someone did a good enough job that jay just had no clue yeah for sure you gotta think it's brett and sunday they or, had to be instrumental in that because jay thought that brett and sunday were with him right mm-hmm. i think he did yeah because they just act like they still had it in the bag mm-hmm. excellent anything else you want to say before we head into episode no, nine i think we should put it to be all right thanks everyone uh, for sending in your thoughts your predictions your things that make you go hmm because there's definitely some of those this week and uh you spark some other ideas for me to consider too i enjoyed that also hey special thanks to walter and jill for your donations we really appreciate your support for our operational costs and don't forget to get your picks in before the deadline on wednesday 7 30 eastern 4 30 pacific time and this is your only chance to select a new USB. Yep. Just remember the caveats, like we said in the recap show. I'm not going to restate them here. Okay. We're not. <laughs> but, again, be certain that you don't change your USB 24 before you are absolutely sure because you cannot go back to them for 24 points see how we didn't restate that only go back isn't that an amazing demonstration of what i said all the other stuff (laughs) anything else you do not rule me that's true (laughs) nope just have a great weekend everybody all right have a great one